my booking was done by myself almost completely. A couple of times I did have agents, and then I stopped doing agents. And I decided if God wants this to happen, he's going to help this happen. So I would do my own scheduling. And uh, it worked fine, but in time it started to become a labor to me. And I started to get really uncomfortable with the idea of, and I'm summarizing here, I pick up the phone, I call the church, and I say, I'm, I'm really being very basic here, but I'm saying, this is Fred Frank, I sing and talk about Jesus, and if you'd like me to come out in your church and do that for money, I'll do it. And that bothered me. That really bothered me because it was the, the whole thing was the money thing. And uh, they would say, well, what do you charge? And uh, I wouldn't, I'd say, I'd really prefer to come on a love offering. Uh, but it just, it, I just felt uncomfortable. It was not a natural relationship. And in the meantime, these uh, churches and these ministers of music who I would talk to uh, uh, were getting lots of other calls from lots of other people. And it just, it just became, it started to get hard. And I, I just didn't do it like it. So I, I stopped doing that. But it was really interesting. About that same time, um, and this was 1991 now, uh, I was in Sacramento. I had done a seminar for a church choir the day before. I did a couple services in the morning. And between services at that church in Sacramento, I was sitting in the choir room reading the paper, having a cup of coffee, eating a donut. And uh, I thought I heard a conversation across the choir room between some of the choir members and the organist. And uh, it sounded like maybe he was a funeral director. And so as we were going back into church for the second service, I was right by him and I leaned over to him. I said, are you a funeral director? He said, yes. I said, I said do you have time after the service to talk a minute? Sure. We got together and I told him about what I had been keeping inside of me for probably a dozen years, and that was a need to bring something new to the funeral service profession through recorded music. There were other companies out there, but I just felt as though they could be considerably improved on, and I thought I could do it. So I explained to him and gave him some ideas musically of what it would be like, and uh, he was rather receptive. He said, you know, if you do this, he said, uh, I'll buy it. And after our coffee or lunch or whatever it was, he said, you know, I think that if you do this, there will be thousands that will buy this. And I came home, talked to Judy. I had just finished reading a book called God Owns My Business by Stanley Tams. And uh, Judy and I just said, let's take it to the Lord. And if and we'll just ask him to give us red, yellow, or green lights. And we want to put this in his hand. Let's see what sort of signs we get. Well, we have been looking at green lights in, since 1991. And uh, we began producing. We started off with 16 albums, some of it vocal, some of it instrumental. The market was ready for us. And so it was very successful. And we went on the road and went to these funeral homes all across from California to Maine. <laughs> and. Um, it was neat because people received us so well and said they really needed what we had. And we are, of course, now in thousands of funeral homes, not only in this country, most of it's in this country, but we're in about 15 other countries, too. And uh, we've uh, worked hard at uh, this company called Comfort Music, and now we're at a point where we have 43 albums, uh, over 50 hours of music. It's, it's been a wonderful business for us. We were starting to make more money and create, do some creative financing and started looking at houses and near the ocean and found this one that we're in now. But yeah, God has really blessed us these last, well, from the very beginning actually, but we've had ups and downs financially, but we're, we're just so, we love living in San Clemente and um, our children come and visit, our grandchildren, and so we're, we just feel really blessed. When all is said and done, if something I have said has made the least little difference to just one single someone, then all of this has been worthwhile. And I'm glad for all the stops along the way. And I'm glad for all the pain and all the problems. For I, just as you, want to know that the Lord has a purpose for me. And I, just as you, 
want to find that special place that's just for me. So until I come to the end of my season, I pray my life will always have a reason. And I beseech thee, Lord, to use me. Till all is said and done. God bless you.